This is Tech Savvy in the School Library. I am Paige Bradenkamp. I'm the School Library Consultant at the Wyoming State Library. My focus at the State Library is specifically school libraries, finding resources, um, providing trainings, uh, building communication, offering up uh, consultation services, and anything that I can do to connect you with the resources that you need to do the best job in your school library. At the end of the presentation, uh, there is a list of all of the resources on a slide, all of the resources that I cover today. Um, so if you, if we're going through the program and you're wondering where to find some of these, there is a list at the end that will help you um, connect with these resources. The first tool that I would like to talk about today is Animoto. This is a personal favorite of mine. Um, I've played with it quite a bit, and I even convinced my, my boss here at the State Library to purchase a license for this, and so we use it here at the State Library now as well. Um, I like it because it's a super easy tool. Um, you can create slideshows or marketing videos in minutes, literally in minutes. Um, you can use your own images and your text, you just drop them into the slides. Um, you can select pre-made themes that, that come with music and that have uh, backgrounds that, you, that highlight your, your images. Um, you can record your own voice into them. You can easily edit and publish your videos. And even after you have published your videos, you can go back and edit it very easily. You just need to republish that video. These videos are uploadable to YouTube at the push of a button. Uh, very simple, and you can also share it easily across social media, like Twitter and Facebook, um, email, SmugMug, any uh, any broad range of social media tools that you like to use, you can send uh, your videos to that tool. This is a slide of my own dashboard, um, and so you can see that it's useful for making book trailers. Uh, I did information power promotional videos, um, and you can go back, and I could edit these at any time still, um, and it saves it. You can go back, um, and you can just click on it, and it takes you right to your video storyboarding station, and this is where you actually do the creating, and you can see the different slides. Um, all you do is add your text, or you can drop in a photo, add captions. Over here, in the sidebar, you can add slides that you're not sure where you want to put them or you're not sure if you're going to use them. You can click, drag and drop any of these slides to reorder it. Uh, preview your video um, so you get a sense of what it's going to be like and you can go back and edit or you can just go on to produce it. This is something that you can use to promote your library programs. If you're doing online instruction or flipped and blended classrooms, something that you can share with your colleagues if they are participating in those types of learning environments. Um, it's a favorite of mine for making book trailers, again, because it is so simple to build your videos. Um, for advocacy, for fundraising, um, you can even make your own fun videos for your students during the summer to promote a book. You know, I mean, very easy to use and again, a favorite. So that was Animoto. The next tool that I am going to talk about is Sugarcane. And this is an educational game creator. We all like games. Um, and especially in the classroom or the school library, games are fun. They're a great way to encourage learning while at the same time stimulating and engaging students. Um, you can make your own game for the subject and content that you are teaching. And they can be fun games. This is a game, uh, or this is a topic called Popular Culture that has 13 data sets. Um, and I'll talk about the data sets in just a minute. Um, but 13 data sets, um, you can plug those into numerous games. Um, but you can also make games for assessment. You know, maybe you talked about the nervous system or the Revolutionary War, and you just, you just want kind of a formative assessment um, just to see where your students are at this point. They can go in, play a game, you can check their scores, um, see how well they're doing, see what you might need to go back and reteach. Um, I made a game um, with Go Wild. Uh, it's called Get With Go Wild, 
and this one is a matching game. And um, as you can see on the side here, you have in the blue the content button and the database. So this is the content, and you get to choose what information in your data set will be your content and what will be your answers. Um, and so here, the student or whoever is playing this game needs to choose which is the best database in GoWild.net for beginning researchers. Um, and that would be Kids InfoBits. And um, it does time you, you can have play modes, um, and it scores you. And creating a game is easy. You just, um, you add a data set, and this is the information that you want in the game. Um, you choose what type of game you want, and there are 18 options. I mean, as you can see, there's a variety of different types of games. You can customize your game, publish it, and you're set to play. And it is that easy. Um, and it's free. You can use it. And you can also, um, you can make as many games as you want. Um, you can use other people's games that they have uh, created. And others can use your games that you've created. So it's also a kind of a community as well. You can keep track of your games, your data sets, and your scores in your dashboard. Um, so that was Sugarcane. This is, um, and for some of you who may have been at What the Tech at the Wyoming Library Association Conference um, in this past summer, may recognize some of these resources. I did pull some of these resources from the What the Tech because there are fabulous resources. Um, they're not all from What the Tech, but um, several of them are. So thank you to everybody who submitted to What the Tech, and you might see your submission here. Um, this is another one that was from What the Tech, Clips. This is a shareable, editable video app, um, and it's for Apple products. Unfortunately, right now it's only good for Apple iPhone. Um, they are working to make it available for Android as well. So you can create fun videos with your iPhone. All you have to do is simply press record to capture your video. Then you can add titles and captions and it has a speech to text function that lets you add titles simply by speaking into your phone, which is kind of fun and again, very easy. Um, and then you can add animations and filters. So I comicized it. This actually looks kind of funny, but you can tweak the filters a little bit and the animations to get it just the way you want it. So you can go from just a regular um, video or photo and completely customize it to make it the way you want it to be. You can also set your video to music, um, which it makes it a little more fun and engaging. You can use clips for presenting classroom content, um, flipped and blended classrooms it works great for, demonstrating class works, classwork um, and activities to the parents and administration, and just for fun personal use. So from clips, we're going to go to BookFlix. This is a GoWild.net resource. So anybody in Wyoming can access this for free. Um, if you're at school, it comes up automatically. If you're at home, you can use a remote user login. Uh, that means using your library card as well as the password. Uh, BookFlix is a literacy resource for pre-K through three, and it's a book pairing tool, and you can choose your stories by category, and then you can find the fiction and the nonfiction tool or the fiction and the nonfiction book. Uh, you can watch the story. Uh, they have the animated videos of a lot of these great classics and they're done very well. It's not simply the story told um, on a video camera. There's actually animation that makes it more like a real video or a real animated story. Um, you can let BookFlix read to the students or they can read this, the story themselves. Um, this is great for budding or struggling readers and it can be accessed at home. Also, Spanish versions are available. Uh, BookFlix also has helpful ideas and activities um, such as uh, programs that you can use in your library 
uh, connected to book clicks, classroom activities, um, resources to send home for parents to in reading with their children. Um, you can browse all of the titles by title instead of having to go through the, the topics. Um, and it gives some helpful tips for using paired texts. Um, you can also, up in the resources with that little apple, if you click on that, you can download resources such as book clicks, uh, related bookmarks that you can print out, and posters that you can hang up to just encourage your students, um, your staff, to use book clicks. It's a great resource provided um, to everybody in Wyoming. So, hey, why not use it? The next tool is one that can be geared towards older students, and this is CIA.gov. Our federal documents librarian presented this at What the Tech, and it's a great resource. Um, as you know, CIA stands for Central Intelligence Agency. Um, and here at CIA.gov, you can access the Freedom of Information Act electronic reading room where they offer uh, documents that once were classified and now have been declassified, and you can go in and look at those. Very interesting material. Um, the Nazi War Crimes Disclosure Act, um, Berlin Wall Collection, great for high school research projects or the budding historian. Um, other resources that you can access at CIA.gov are CIA maps. You can get a virtual headquarters tour. Um, intelligence literature, a world factbook, um, information about world leaders. And I think one of my favorites is you can learn about the dogs of the canine corps. Um, and these are just a few of the heroic canines that have served our country through um, the canine corps. The Google Earth Voyager. Um, this is a world tour. This is a fantastic resource. If you've ever used Google Earth, you know the capability and just the, the engaging uh, features of Google Earth. Well, this is the Voyager and it gives you a world tour. And as you can see, here is our Earth and you can go on a tour um, by clicking on any of these icons in the left hand side. Um, you can find a showcase of interactive interactive guided tours. Um, there are theme-centered voyages. This is updated weekly, um, but you can see stories and tours on travel, culture, nature, and history. Um, back to the Earth screen, if you click on the ship's wheel there, that will take you to a menu where you can pick what kind of adventure you would like to go on or what kind of adventure you would like to take your students on. Um, and as you can see, uh, you can explore Tokyo, you can uh, go to the Amazon, Backpackers Paradise. Um, here's the adventure of Chasing Coral. One of the neatest features of this program, this software, is the underwater street view. And I think most of us are familiar with the street view where you can see at street level where you are and click on the arrow and move forward or backward or turn. Well, the underwater street view allows you to do that underwater, which I think is phenomenal. This is, this is just a wonderful, wonderful tool. Um, here, uh, we're going to Yamada Point in Ana, Okinawa, Japan. And here, using the underwater street tool, you can see how clear it is and how wonderful. And now you look up, and following the arrow again, you can continue to look around and actually get a 360 view of this area. On the right-hand side in the sidebar, you can see information about this area that you are exploring now. Um, here is back to the menu. Whoops, back to the menu, you can, um, pick based on editor's picks, travel, nature, whatever you are looking for, you can click on that button and be more likely to find it. Um, here is a sample of the Amazon. Um, and what I wanna show you here is in the sidebar, you can uh, click on any of these boxes and get more information about that subject within the area you're searching. 
Um, so there's water. You can find out more about the water. Um, you can find out more about the roots of the people in the Amazon and the resistance. Um, and that might be interesting to explore. Um, this is a tour of the South Pole. You click on Explore and it begins to take you to different points in the South Pole and gives you information about each area that you are viewing. Um, this is a picture of the Hurricane Harvey aftermath. Software is updated weekly. You get relevant information and this is available through Chrome and on Android. Google teamed up with BBC, NASA, and Sesame Street uh, to add all of these three-dimensional representations, but that gives you an idea of the breadth and depth of this, this software, just how, um, how much it covers and how in-depth it gets with each of these places around the world. Um, the next uh, resource that I want to share is planbook.com. This is an online lesson planning tool, one that I have used in the past, but one that um, was also shown at What the Tech this past summer. Um, this is a way to easily plan your lessons. You can share your lessons with your colleagues, um, and also you can update grades. Um, here is, these are pictures of two different components. This is your lesson plan, and as you can see, uh, you can do it by day. You can color code to make seeing which lessons for which classes more easy. Um, and you can copy and paste, you can scooch forward a day or a week. Um, just very easy to, um, to do your lessons with. And also you can use the gradebook tool to um, store grades, update grades, and it's easy to select your periods um, select your subjects, etc. And here's another bit about updating the grade. Um, and that moves us into Classcraft. This is classroom management game style. And this is um, something that you can use to manage student behavior um, because of the game atmosphere, the game environment, and the story behind it. It makes it very engaging for kids and um, actually very easy for you to keep track of how students are doing. Um, students can earn gold pieces and powers by staying on task and with their positive behaviors. And with the gold, they can purchase gear and pets and um, make the story more robust. But with negative behaviors, they lose their healing powers. Um, there is so much to this as well as you can have teams within this program. Um, you can connect with other teachers who are using Classcraft um, and make it so that your students can play the same character in all of their classes. Um, you can also turn your lessons into quests and make each objective another um, point in your quest. And that makes it kind of fun for teachers as well. And that moves us into Teachers First. This is a website that offers lesson plans and other resources. It's an online community for teachers. It um, offers over 15,000 teacher review resources since 1998. Um, so it's been around for a while, which is always a good sign. Um, if you just wanna get your toes wet with this, you can sign up for an email list and have their newsletter with EdTech uh, sent to your inbox um, and that, um, is just a variety of ed tech broken down into subjects and, um, and age levels. And it's just a really great way to see new technology that's being used in education. And these are all teacher reviewed, educator reviewed, librarian reviewed resources. Um, or you can become a member for free. It is all free. And there you can access lesson plans um, you can access their webinar series, uh, tech tips and advice on how to use different tech, uh, time-saving tools, collaboration resources, and more. And again, it's all free, all peer-reviewed, um, tried and tested. Um, the next resource that I would like to go over is Bunsee. 
Um, and you may have heard about Buncee. It's been in Twitter a lot. Uh, Shannon McClintock Miller has promoted it to a great extent. Um, it's a creation and presentation tool. It's really fun, really easy to use. Young children can use it as well as older children. Um, it's a great research and presentation tool. It offers over 8,000 graphics. You can embed your own graphics um, and download your own videos into it. You can choose from a variety of fonts for text, or you can draw into the, into the presentation. You can record your own voice or upload audio, and it's shareable on social media. Here, I am going to, oh, we're going to move into possibly, oh, hold on, hold on. I'm going to show you here. Uh, this is an example of a Buncee done by a, a, a child who is writing a story. And so you can see that there's animation. And you can move it along. You can draw. You can drop in graphics. There's no audio on this one. But see how fun it is? It just is so much fun. And you can tailor it according to the project that you're working on, as well as the age group. Um, but as you can see, even young children can use it and tell a story or do their biographies. Um, there you go. So we'll go back to our presentation here. And so um, one of the things that I like about Buncee is that it offers programs that support digital citizenship and literacy. And in that, there is... Uh, the Author's Corner, they, um, they feature children's artists um, and classroom activities that pair with those, those artists. The Buncee Ambassador Program helps extend the educator's network. And the Buncee Buddies, this is what I think would be really neat, though I have yet to use it. Um, but it facilitates students in different parts of the world coming together to share and to learn from one another. So it does help... Um, connect students around the world, which I think is a, is a great thing in this day and age. Um, the next resource is Flipgrid. Again, this is one that has come across my Twitter and Facebook feeds quite frequently. It's a video discussion platform, um, and it's how you can help build your library community. Um, all you need to do is create the grid in your community, add a topic for discussion, and something um, that would be beneficial would be maybe your Wyoming State Book Award nominee discussions. Um, but you add your topics, and then students can respond with short videos. Um, you can invite your colleagues and parents to share. And this was an AASL Best App for Teaching and Learning 2017. Um, this is an example of how Buncee was used by a school district. Um, at the beginning of the school year, they had each staff member post videos um, within their school, depending, you know, whatever school that they were in, they posted to that school. Um, and they communicated a welcome and um, told a little bit about themselves and their passion for education. And whoops, I am going to attempt to include audio here. But here we have Spring Lake Park School District. And these are all different topics. And so you post the topics, and then your students or the people posting to these topics um, click on it, and then post to those actual topics. Here is one video that, again, I'm going to try to show. I hope the audio comes through. But I picked this one simply because there's a dog in it. And who doesn't love dogs? My name is Maria Jose Vasquez de Yurita Sanz, and I'm very excited to start this new school year with a great team, great kindergarten teachers, and also very excited to start um, with the new unit to integrate all concepts in my class to make it more fun. Have a great year. Bye-bye. And there was an example of that. I hope you were able to hear that. Um, but it's just fun. Parents can go... Um, get familiar with the teachers for the, of their students um, and in your library community again with the Wyoming State Book Awards students can post videos about the books that they have read and then other people in your community can also access those videos um, great tool 
um, at the end on the resource slide, I posted a link to um, to uh, uh, an online posting, 15 plus ways to use Flipgrid in your classroom. So I think that'll be very interesting for you as well. Okay, the next tool is um, OzoBlockly. If you've heard of OzoBots, this is a tool that goes with OzoBots and it allows um, students to code to control their OzoBots. Uh, learn simple coding uh, to, control, to control your own robots. Um, and here it's a programmable robot um, recommended for six plus age. Uh, the starter kits are $60. Um, this can be used, um, the robot itself can be used as a standalone or with an online site like OzoBlockly. And that's really what I'm here to talk about is OzoBlockly. Um, and, but you can get the Ozobo, OzoBot from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target. You may even have some. But what OzoBlockly does is allows you or allows the student to click and drag coding. And then the user can preview the code, make adjustments. And um, as the coder progresses, the codes get longer and more intricate. And so this is a great way for students to learn coding, um, as well as being able to see the output of their coding with their OzoBot. Players are able to refine their codes and then replay when there's a mistake. So it's really a nice work in progress kind of tool to teach coding. And there you have at the end, you know, if it was successful, you get a success um, flag. And it also allows um, for improvement and gives tips so that your students can learn at their pace about coding. That is it for the resources that I have. And I think I talked faster than I did when I practiced it. But um, so we're going to cut out a little bit early today. But here is the slide with all of the resources. Um, again, I did post 15 ways to use Flipgrid in your class, and that is from the website Ditch That Textbook. You might have heard about it. It promotes online learning and using online tools. If you have any questions, feel free to email me um, or call. Check out my Twitter at PageRB13, um, and uh, you can check out the recording at the archives at the Wyoming State Library on library.wyo.gov. And also in the archives, you will find um, the PowerPoint, or I mean the PDF of the slide presentation.